good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for your time and interest in being in this session with me. Um, the session uh, I'm going to present in the next 15 minutes or so our work with my colleagues, Dr. Marcos Santos and Mr. Igor Pinheiro. Um, the presentation is titled Analysis of the Gaussian AHP Method in the Light of the Pareto Front Obtained Through um, the Multi-Attribute Trade Space Exploration Method. It's a case study, okay? I don't know um, how many of you have had access to our full paper, which was made available at the website of the web conference. Anyway, I will do a briefly um, ex uh, explanation of our objective in this work. Our objective was to verify the relation of the ranking produced by the Gaussian AHP method with the Pareto front produced by the MATE method for the same attributes and for the same design alternatives and to discuss an improvement uh, proposition for the Gaussian AHP method, which by the way was a method proposed in the same conference last year by a group of researchers, of Brazilian researchers, uh, in a seminal paper uh, published here in the AHP, AHP conference in 2021. Um, but the original case study that we were going to uh, discuss today uh, was proposed by Professor Adam Ross in 2014 at the MIT Systems Engineering Research Initiative. And the objective of the uh, work of the case study was to analyze many design alternatives for a new space tug. A space tug is a type of equipment, a space equipment, uh, used for uh, modifying uh, parameters of another space equipment, like uh, satellite, for example. And if you want to um, increase or decrease the orbit of a satellite, one of the methods that you can use is um, space tug. So uh, the case study uses the MATE method, multi-attribute trade space exploration, which was proposed by Professor Adam Ross and Professor Nathan Diller while they were working at NASA, based on the multi-attribute utility theory developed by Ralph Keeney and Howard Rafer in 1976. Well, uh, it's not the objective of the of this presentation to discuss in detail the make method, but um, rather to discuss the uh, proposition, a new proposition for the uh, Gaussian PHP. Anyway, I, I have to uh, describe some uh, a little bit of the uh, make method. Uh, it's uh, based on a concept called multiple attribute utility, which is uh, it's a form of you consolidating many utility functions in just one utility function. It's very useful when you have, uh, when you want to generate, for example, a bidimensional Pareto front rather than using a multi-dimensional Pareto front. So uh, using the multiple attribute utility, you can do that with easy. Uh, it's a summation of N1 to, uh, from one to N where uppercase N the number of attributes of uh, um, the multiplication of the single attribute utility of each attribute by the weight of each attribute. And you do that for each one of the design alternatives. And you have a collection of M, uppercase M uh, design alternatives. And then you, you obtain the multiple attribute utility. And so is the single attribute utility cal uh, calculated for attribute N of the design alternative M. And weight is the, the weight of each one of the uh, attributes. So uh, in the original uh, case study, the group of Professor Adam Ross uh, selected three design alternatives. Actually, uh, they had the opportunity to use many, um, excuse me, not uh, design, uh, not uh, design variables, but attributes, performance attributes. They had the opportunity to select many performance attributes, but uh, they uh, at the end selected only three uh, performance attributes. I'm not going into details of the method used for selecting the attributes. It's not uh, important for the result of, of our work. I have to only to describe, uh, uh, to 
call it the attention for. Uh, look that they assigned weights for each attribute. These weights were obtained by a committee of subject matter experts. And each attribute have some uh, points of interest, some levels of interest. Um, I have to say that uh, these attributes are, have, does not, do not have to be linear, but they have to be monotonically increasing or decreasing, right? And for each one of the levels of interest, there's one um, single attribute you teach value. For example, for the level of interest zero, we have the single attribute interest zero. And for the level 12, we'll have the single attribute utility one. And to intermediate levels, we can do piecewise uh, interpolation. And so on and so forth for the other uh, attributes, delta V capability and response time. Note that uh, for the response time attributes, we have a monotonically decreasing attributes. So uh, the level zero corresponds to the single attribute utility one, and the level one corresponds to the single attribute utility zero. Uh, they could uh, have considered many cost attributes, but they only considered just one uh, cost attribute, which was the total cost of the project in millions of US dollars. And um, these are important. Uh, these they are the design variables they considered. They use, use the uh, technique called DVN, uh, design value matrix to uh, select the variables, the design variables that which uh, had the most impact uh, into the uh, performance attributes and cost attributes. And those variables were payload, proportion type, and fuel level. Uh, as you can see here, uh, they also attribute some levels for each one of the design variables. Uh, and the reason is uh, they want to uh, do to perform a full factorial of each one of these levels to generate many, many design alternatives. So if you have four levels for the payload variable and four levels to the propulsion type level, uh, excuse me, variable, and six levels for the fuel level variable, at the end, when you do a um, full factorial combination, you have 96 uh, design alternatives. And the objective is to position these design alternatives into a uh, bidimensional graph to uh, analyze the um, location of each design alternative uh, in relation to a uh, parameter front. And they also use some auxiliary variables. I'm not going to a uh, description of, it's not for interest of this presentation. Uh, and some constants and some formulae. We, uh, our group uses these uh, formulae and uh, auxiliary variables and variables to generate uh, an application for generating the full factorial of the um, all design variables and to generate the uh, AHP, uh, the, the Gaussian AHP method ranking, okay? And to compare the, the two results. And so uh, this is the uh, result of the MATE method. Uh, we have in the horizontal axis, the normalized total cost. And in the vertical axis, we have the multiple attribute utility. And here, each dot represents a design alternative. Uh, we have here 96 design alternatives, which are the resulting of the full factorial of that, those um, design variables that you saw in the previous slides. And you can see here a Pareto uh, curve, Pareto front in red. Uh, and you can see that some points of the design alternatives coincides with the Pareto um, front. Uh, those points are the most optimized points and you should uh, rationally, uh, for example, to choose this point uh, harder than this point because if you choose this point here, you are going to choose a, a point with a higher cost for the same level of multiple attributes utility. So the points in, in the red cube are the more rational points you have to consider in your design uh, analysis. So um, let's uh, briefly remember the Gaussian AHP method. Uh, as I said before, it was a method proposed last week, last year in this 
um, event in this conference. And the Gaussian AHP method it produces a ranking that's the inner product of each point, in this case, each attribute of each design alternative. And the transposed normalized standard deviation vector of each attribute. And the result is sorted in the percent order. Uh, this is a method that um, uh, you can use when you don't want to, to perform pairwise comparisons. You can uh, use this technique to um, so many uh, variables you want, so many attributes you want. Okay? It's not uh, the objective to enter in details about the uh, Gaussian EHP method, but you can refer to the paper from the Santos and at Elia, uh, which is referenced in our full paper, which is available in the web conference. So uh, after we generated the 96 design of alternatives with the MATE method, we are going, we were uh, now performing the study of those alternatives in the light of the AHP method, okay? From the 96 design alternatives that was, uh, were generated by the MATE method, constituted of two attributes from uh, monotonically conflicting utility functions, which were total cost and multiple attribute utility, and having 11 points in the Pareto front. If you can count here, we have um, one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 points in the Pareto front. And those design alternatives and attributes are then submitted to the Gaussian AHP method. And interestingly enough, seven points within the range, the first to the uh, 12th of the Gaussian EHP ranking coincided with the Pareto front. As you can see here in the next slide, we have uh, in this graph, uh, uh, 10 points of the uh, Gaussian EHP ranking coinciding with the, the Pareto front. Um, by the other, in the other hand, uh, the original uh, Gaussian PHP ranking only seven points coincided with the Pareto front. Um, we also are proposing a modification to the original Gaussian AHP method. And the modification we are proposing is um, uh, we are uh, harder than uh, using the inner product for producing the ranking we are proposing to use the bivariate Gaussian probability mass function of each point sorted in crescent order. Since the points in the extremities of the feasible region have lower probability mass function values than points near the center of the feasible region, they will appear first in the ranking. So if you look at this picture, the points in the extremities of the feasible region, which are these, these points and these points here uh, have lower probability mass function values than the points in the, uh, near the center of the feasible region. So it's more probable that points with uh, lower values of probability mass functions will coincide with the parties to front. Uh, it, was also, uh, it was the case in this specific case study, okay? It's not guaranteed that will uh, happen in all uh, situations. That's uh, what, I'm, what we are saying here. For this case study, the first 12 points of the ranking produced by modified uh, Gaussian AHP method are closer to the Pareto front uh, than using the original Gaussian AHP method. As I said, when you use the original uh, AH, Gaussian AHP method, only seven points coincided with the Pareto front. When you, we use it, the uh, modified uh, proposition, uh, 10 points of the ranking generated by the modified, by the modified Gaussian AHP method coincided with the Pareto front. Uh, we have to do the disclaimer, uh, uh, as in the original Gaussian AHP method, it's not guaranteed that the first points in the ranking will coincide, will coincide with the Pareto front. For example, if you uh, take another uh, very popular method like the electric two, uh, it's guaranteed that the first points of the ranking generated by um, uh, electric method will coincide with the part of the flow. Okay, so um, that's all, folks. Uh, thank you very much for your time and interest. And 
now if you have any questions i will be glad to to answer